This is the Weekly Set, an official podcast of thetotalscreen.com. I wish I was the monster you think I am. You have come here to beseech me. Madness can be a medicine for the modern world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of The Total Screen. I am your host, my name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at The Total Screen, William Rorick. Hello. So today, we are going to be talking about WandaVision, the first three episodes to take us right up to date with what's out on Disney Plus at this moment, and then we will be discussing the series week to week from this point on. So we're going to be talking about the first three episodes filmed before a live studio audience, Don't Touch That Dial, Now in Color. Are Those are the names of those episodes. So one of the interesting things about the structure of WandaVision, at least so far, it feels like it's starting to break from that structure in like the third episode. Like you had small little moments in the right. first Right, I mean... The third I- episode feels like you're seeing a pretty solid break coming. Yeah, I, well, that's by necessity because there's yeah. a bigger there's a bigger story that they're they're leading into, and as that as that comes more into focus, the whole uh, the gimmick or the pastiche is going to have to kind of move into the background. Yeah, but right now it's kind of easy. Like usually when we discuss like multiple episodes of a show, it's kind of hard to keep track of which episode is which because they what, all kind of run together because it's what, serialized. What's nice is like the is like every episode is like a different era or a different like decade of uh sitcoms yes and so i believe the first episode was the 50s and then yes the, definitely yes. it's 50s 60s 70s yes the first two are pretty close like it, it could almost both be 50s or both be 60s but there wasn't a lot that changed well, in the sitcom environment in those years at least yeah the there was a there's a lot of 60s sitcoms are still very similar to 50s sitcoms so there wasn't like any radical difference yeah you, you had that big cultural shift at, in like the late 60s and stuff but that wasn't really reflected on tv until like the 70s right yeah exactly so you still got stuff still got people I, sleeping in separate beds like you know, black and I, white i believe know. i read that kevin feige consulted with dick van dyke for the show so i want to say that the first episode is a pastiche of the dick van dyke show which would have been a 56 which was a 50 sitcom if i'm not mistaken yeah like it, it kind of like you, you have that feeling running through both like vision in those in the first two episodes especially very much feels kind of like analogous of dick van dyke himself Right. Like the actor and, and like the way he portrays the roles and stuff, you know? Right. Like they, he's they kinda were... he's not like the stupid husband or something, he's kinda witty, you know? And it, it kind of fits in that kind of like, the, the second episode was definitely riffing on I love Lucy. Definitely. Like it had yeah. that feeling of like, oh, this is one of their schemes, you know? This is like the husband and wife scheme kind of thing. <laughs> there was a little bit of that in the first episode too, where they had like, you know, the the heart on the calendar and they didn't know what it was but neither was going to admit that they didn't know what it was. Right. Yeah, exactly. That was very I Love Lucy. Yeah. Like, you know, like where like both sides would be thinking that they were like right and, you know, or like hiding what they were, their own ignorance or something and suspecting that the other person was ignorant of it and being upset at them. That that whole kind of misunderstanding thing was very I Love Lucy. But yeah, like you could fe- you could see the different kind of elements kind of coming into play from different like kind of sitcoms of that time. Like I watched the first two episodes and then like I immediately like I, I got grabbed my mom and said, OK, you need to watch this with me. Like you might not understand the overarching stuff of the story. Like so I'll try to help you out as much as I can there. But like it's just so interesting, like how much they nailed the aesthetic of like the 50s and 60s. Sitcoms. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, like it just it. feels like it's a sitcom that's out of place, you know, that's like out of time, which is similar to like, like the first season of Stranger Things when like after I watched that, I was like, this feels like I found a 80s kids adventure movie, like a Monster Squad or Goonies that just like was never released. Right, exactly. Because, you know, because... <laughs> Because again, they, they, they don't make like a big deal out of like the era. They don't like mm. throw in a bunch of references just to say, 
oh, this this is the era this takes place in. Hey, remember hula hoops? Boy, those 50s. Yeah, it's yeah. like all that stuff's there, but it's not like they don't draw attention to it because they wouldn't have done that, you know? Right, Because like, yeah, that exactly. was just what everybody understood. So so you just get the hula hoop, but you don't get the, like, pointing to it, you know? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly. So it, if it, it, comes, it comes across as authentic. Exactly. And, yeah. And obviously, if it wasn't for the uh, the film quality, obviously, you know, you you could kind of mistake it for being a sitcom from that era. Well, they they even degraded the film quality a bit. They made it like uh, they used a square aspect ratio. Did you notice like the audio too was like a bit tinny? It had that oh. old kind of like that old kind of audio sound that you'd have on like a sitcom and stuff. Oh the, yeah. The contrast was similar. Like you know, I I used to do a little bit with like film and stuff, and so you could really tell like they didn't just like slapping into black and white like it was like the black and white is not all across the board the same as as all other black and whites so there's like different kinds of black and whites you know and you could tell like that the, how they went with that stuff i also like you'd mentioned them consulting dick van dyke i think they consulted several people oh yeah that were sure. involved in sitcoms and I remember like hearing something where they were talking about, I forgot who they said that they had been consulting, but they were talking about like how I think it was like in Bewitched or something or, or I love, or, um, I dream of Genie, one of those where when they used magic and stuff to go like, Oh, the plates are moving on their own and they'd hang them on wires and stuff and, and how they like were replicating that for the show for these kind of really kind of cheap effects. And they did, they not only did that, but they used like the, you notice like whenever vision would like phase through something, they'd use like, like the, those like 50s like sparkle effects and stuff yeah yeah and no, like the that like weird transparency effect that's done by like double exposing film that they like used and stuff so like they were like really doing a good job of replicating that that style and look and it only made it much more effective whenever there'd be a moment that broke away from that kind of like, you know, retro feel. So like in the first episode, there was the dinner party scene and the boss starts choking and the wife's just like laughing. The wife, uh, who was the wife in that 70s show, by the way, which is yeah, <laughs> funny. But great casting. Uh, but Well, she she's laughing, but it's like. It's unsettling because she's laughing, but you can see like in her inner, like her expression on her face looks like she's worried, like there's an urgency, but she can't, but she's laughing at the same time. Yeah. She's like laughing and saying, stop it, stop it. Like kind of yeah, like stop. in that kind of like fun kind of way. But then at the same time, there's almost like a desperation, like stop it, you know, like coming right. through as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it just goes Crazy. on for, for quite a bit where it's just getting uncomfortable, you know? And it's like, okay, this is weird. Like what's going on? with this you know and they finally like resolved it kind of quickly and then it just immediately jumped back in to like you know the wife going like well i think we should head home now or something like like nothing ever happened you know right exactly it's one of those moments where where, where you get to see like the, the cracks in the mm -hmm. fantasy and then those became more apparent in the second episode yes um, where they had the first moment i think was the second I, episode with the magic show and well, vision, even before uh, the magic show vision, vision swallowing the gum and and it's in making him all wacky <laughs> that, that but that was very much for the era like even the animated thing with the the gum well, yeah, I, getting caught up in his cogs you know? yeah i know that yeah. No, what, I, what i'm talking about is the cracks so like no the, i'm just saying that that's the episode that it happened yeah in. but the cracks for the first time they really showed i think there was a and there was a sound that made Wanda leave the house because they'd had earlier in the episode, like the tree banging on the wall, but that never really broke the seams at that point. But then there was like another thing where she heard something and then she went outside and there was like a red helicopter toy. Yeah, there's a red. It's in color. Yeah. You know, like, like we got to stress second episode still in black and white. So there being a red helicopter toy is weird. Like if it was just like a black and white helicopter toy, it'd be OK. But the fact that's in color, like. Like that's a big sign. And also yeah. and also she and also apparently she can perceive that it's in color. Yeah. So it's like you could tell she's realizing something's off. Yeah. And and you know, then it kinda like everything kind of snaps out of place and she kind of forgets about it. And then there's another scene where um Dottie, who is kind of like I wrote down neighborhood queen, she's like the the person who runs the neighborhood with like an iron fist. And she's right. the one running the talent show and stuff. But there's a part where she cuts herself and 
and she's bleeding and that's red as well. Yeah. And Wanda sees that. And there's like a moment of kind of panic, not just from Wanda, but from Dottie herself, where she just kind of is like looking at Wanda, like, what's like, who are you? Like, what is this? What's going on? And then like snaps back to like her same, like prudish kind of like neighborhood queen self, like as if nothing had happened. Also, people don't bleed on sitcoms. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So, so that, so that makes the whole scene like very unsettling and weird it's it's very unsettling it's it's very lynchian and kind of in its execution yeah yeah definitely and that leads to the the next crack that happens in that episode that's very lynchian is the moment where Wanda gets like that sudden pregnancy they hear saying they go outside and like there's like a beekeeper crawling out of the sewer in this really kind of creepy way yes that's like so lynchian you know that's so, yeah it's so lynchian and then and then Wanda says no and it rewinds yeah and then they just skip that part or something so it's just like it's interesting in like multiple ways because it's like okay something's off it looks like Wanda's being fucked with we know Vision's dead you know in the series oh he should be you know, unless well, it takes sh- place at a different point. Well, he should he should be dead because last we saw him, Th- Thanos killed him by by removing the Mind Stone from his head. Yeah, and the Mind Stone's destroyed now, so there's no yeah, <laughs> there's no coming back or something at least that we know of yet. You know, so it's kind of like okay, something's really off here. But then there's also the implication that somebody's fucking with Wanda, but at the same time, like she has some semblance of control over what's happening because she was able able to like rewind it she was able to like have some exertion of control over it you know right and what's interesting is i don't know how much you've read about about what the series is supposed to be no i haven't because a i don't want spoilers b i don't know if i don't know if people are exactly correct just because like they recognize some plot threads the mcu so far has never been one-to-one with uh, with any particular comic book story Mm -hmm. civil war is the best example that definitely doesn't follow the comic one to one. There's no clone Thor. There's no uh, Thunderbolts. There's there's no like uh, Captain America punching uh, punching out the Punisher. Doesn't happen. Yeah. Well, this is this is more like straight actual stuff that Marvel said. Okay. So it's not it's not like you know plot details of like what's really going on is not what I'm talking about. It's like it's like how this is going to tie into other things in the MCU. Oh yeah you know yeah 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 I know uh, they said. They said specifically this ties into both the next Doctor Strange film and the next Spider-Man film. Like all three of the those are connected, at least uh, directly. Yeah, yeah. And so it's the Doctor Strange thing here is what I'm talking about is that they made the implication also that when Scarlet Witch is in, which is the- Wanda in the new Doctor Strange movie. It's because of the implication. Yeah, she's going to have more, she's going to be more closer to her comic book self oh, as wow. far as like abilities. And so that's that's kind of what I'm saying. Like the ability to kind of rewind time or do something, that's outside of Wanda's skill sets. Right, as far as we so know. Far, you know. So far, yeah. In the comics, she has like she can like warp reality. Yeah, she can warp reality. I mean, one of the biggest uh one of the biggest event uh series in Marvel happened because of Scarlet Witch. It was like uh the X Men, no more mutants. Wanda basically said no more mutants and wiped mutants completely out of existence. Yeah. So when, when we say like reality warping, we don't mean like illusionary. We mean like, like literal reality warping, like, like literally willing things out of in or out of existence or changing things like drastically with that. So that kind of makes you go like, Ooh, this, this has a lot of possibilities and they weren't, they weren't really portraying that with Wanda in the MCU yet at this point. And it no. seems like they're getting to that. That, that, that's what they're building towards. Yeah. Here, yeah. To end up putting her into Doctor Strange in the next Doctor Strange. That's why Doctor Strange would be involved because he wouldn't really get involved with otherwise, you know, it's right. because of the reality changing stuff that he would get involved. Right. Exactly. Like he, he would, he would be one of the few people who would actually be able to perceive something like that. Yes. A, cha- a change in reality. Yes, exactly. So that's kind of like that. That's what I was like hinting around at, you know, <laughs> like that's kind of where things seem to 
to be going. Like, we don't know. You know, they Marvel also is known to kind of mislead with their comments and stuff, you know? Yeah, they um, are. So we don't know. Like, you know, there's a lot of implications about what was going to happen with the scrolls and stuff with uh, um, Captain Marvel. And that ended up going in a very different direction than they were implying it would. That's kind of like what makes this really interesting to see that Wanda seems to be like, it's like she's being fucked with, but at the same time that she's able to exert some control. For sure. Yeah. And so that's the thing. That's the big lesson from her, her no comment in the, in the second episode and, and where that went. <sighs> the scenes started becoming a, a bit even more apparent in like the third episode. Yeah. Like, third, um, third episode really brought it further to the forefront. So mm-hmm. we're, we're getting deeper into the mystery now of what's happening. Yeah. That, there's oh, a, okay. the third episode is in color. It's yeah. based on the seventies. We're in the seventies now by episode. They, they did like a little bit of a Brady bunch spoof kind of thing with the opening too yeah they did yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like the so you get, you get in color in the third episode and as the second episode ended with this kind of miraculous pregnancy well now wanda's pregnant and and her pregnancy is advancing ridiculously quick and apparently it's causing her abilities to go out of control yeah and they're doing um they're doing all the tropes of like the the baby story you know like so they have the doctor that comes in he's does the home visit in a way that's like very uh, uh um i don't know like kind of cheesy fun kind of thing that like a doctor visit would never be like right yeah exactly <laughs> And so they have all that kind of stuff and, and, uh, um, but there's kind of like a, a, a sense of unease at what's happening too. There's like a happiness in the character stuff. There's also a sense of unease, but then it just starts getting more noticeable that like the neighbors and stuff are kind of like whispering behind their backs and like talking and something's going on. And it's not like in a sitcom way, like they're gossiping or something and it's done playfully. No, it's like there's something they're discussing something. They're uneasy about something. There was like a, a really weird scene where like one of the neighbors. Herb is like cutting his hedges or something by the fence. Yeah. And he's just like cutting into the fence. Yeah. He's cutting into it. And, and this, this is, this is another change because, because up until now, it's been a uh, Wanda noticing all this weird stuff, but this time a vision notices it. Yeah. And he's the one who says like, Herb, you're, you're cutting into, you're cutting into the wall, you know? And he's and, like, Oh, am I? And then he just keeps doing it. And he just keeps doing it. And yeah. Vision is like, kind of like, oh, okay, that's strange. Yeah. Something's going on here. This isn't right, you know? Right. Yeah. So you, so you start to get like those kind of elements start to come into play. Well, we then, get like a scene later where like Vision starts to, starts to, uh, confess to Wanda that, you know, he finds like, he thinks something strange is going on. You know, he, it looks like he's putting it together, but then it rewinds and it rewinds back and then he, and then it, it continues and he just like says something completely different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of seams, lots of stuff starting to break. The big one that ends up happening is with the character of Geraldine, who we haven't mentioned yet, who uh, um, is a, a black neighbor who Wanda befriends in the second episode because they both feel kind of like outsiders at the like neighborhood meeting or whatever for the talent show. And they end up getting kind of close and, and it kind of starts a little bit in the second episode. In the third episode, they're really kind of developing kind of more of a friendship. She becomes a much more prominent role in it. And there's a point at which Geraldine starts kind of, she mentions something that in applies more knowledge than she should have. And that kind of sets Wanda off. And the yeah. episode basically ends with Wanda like sending her out of that reality or something. Right. For the first well, time we see what's happening outside of this really. I mean, we saw like somebody watching something on a TV screen kind of in the end credits thing, but this is like besides that, this is like the first real. Well, we we got the sense that Geraldine was a plant who was inserted into that reality through yes. some means. Yes, exactly. Like and Wanda I- expelled her. Yeah. And you could see there's like a there's a whole structure kind of built up. And it's funny too, that's in our tenth scene because as Wanda is questioning Geraldine, Vision's talking to his neighbors and they're also like, you know, being saying weird things, you know? Yeah, they're like whispering to each other and it's like oh offhand comments. Yeah, you know, whispering to each other, making offhand comments. You know, they start talking about Geraldine. You're like, oh, you know, have you talked to Geraldine? You know, like she she just moved here. She doesn't have any any family or anything. But yeah, know? like the, the way they did that was kind of cool because they said like she doesn't have like a job or a family, yeah, yeah. or a house, or you know? a house. <laughs> like, yeah. 
it was like that last one. It was just kind of like, okay, that's really weird, you know, like because because uh, um, Vision was kind of like, oh well, you know, she's just new. She doesn't have that yet. And then like you get to the house part, and it's just kind of like, okay, that's a little unnerving. They they start they start breaking character, but they start breaking character. But as soon as Vision starts questioning it, they immediately go back into their characters. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a, it's another weird thing. Yeah, definitely. That's kind of what this show is like. It's like these, you have this strong format and then you have these Lynchian moments of just kind of weirdness that something's got going kind of wrong or something. I think the implication that's made in the last episode, in episode three, not just with Wanda sending Geraldine away, but with the way she reacted to Vision when Vision came back into the house is implying that like we're really starting to get away from the format now. Like we're going to get a lot more into what's actually going on in the next episode. Oh yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see like an actual full scene outside of what What's going on now? Right. Yeah, exactly. And I'm looking forward to it very yeah. much. That's where we're going to start getting where it's going to start feeling more Marvel like because that's something that actually I saw some people complaining about the show. Just it just didn't feel Marvel enough. Like it was too weird. It was it was just being too much of like into the sitcom thing and it didn't fit. And it's like I like all of that stuff. I, I like that. You know, like I love the MCU and stuff. But one of the things I love most about the MCU is the way that they were able to kind of go like, OK, these aren't just a bunch of superhero movies like you know winter soldier is like a 70s espionage movie, right you know? like we, we can play we can play with the format exactly <laughs> and so like i'm really i really like that they're playing with the format with uh wandavision but at the same time i want that kind of connected marvel you know mcu bit in there too and that's like starting to come starting to kind of push forward right now which is exciting leading into next week where i think we're going to get a lot more of that oh yeah for for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, as far as the criticisms, I say that that that's the weakness of doing this as a weekly show like I think if they if they did this where people could binge, you know, and you could see where they were going, I I believe there'd be a lot less complaints. Yeah, people people like to you know snap the judgment like too early, you know. Right, exactly. And, and there, I think a lot of people have just there's a whole generation of people now that like didn't grow up. Their adult TV watching experience did not include waiting week to week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're exactly. too used to having stuff whenever they want it, and it's almost like the. the the very concept of waiting week to week is like a completely foreign to them, you know? And it, it, it's like, we finally hit that point, you know, where like that's become so much the norm now that like people just start, they struggle with that. And uh, um, you and I both being elderly se- senior citizen gentlemen, um, <laughs> <laughs> remember a simpler time <laughs> when television yes. came week to week, yes. when, when we only had like four channels. <laughs> We come from the time where we, you know, we had more content and stuff. We, we came from the time of cable TV and stuff, but like everything was week to week, you know, that's kind of so binging. I think to us, you know, I can't speak for you, but at least for me and I think for you, it always felt like something kind of different even now, you know, even when it's become so commonplace and stuff. Whereas like the frame of reference is very different for, for younger people right now. But that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the, for the actual progress of the show. I kind of wanted to address some of like the, the, the guest spots or appearances in it, you know, cause there's sure. a few kind of cool ones. We had mentioned, um, Deborah Jo Rupp from that 70s show. She was like the mother in that 70s show. Yeah. Yeah. She played the wife in the first, Miss Hart in the first episode. She was fantastic. Yeah. It, it was, it was delightful seeing her. Her, the person who played her husband, he's not nearly as well known or something, but like he, they did such a good job, like him as an actor, but also like the show of like really nailing that like period appropriate, like fifties TV boss. Like it's like perfect, you know, <laughs> it's like it just, they did such a good job of making it all feel like that to me, to just nailing the character types, you know, and making them feel like they're characters from that era of television, you know? Um, and I think think that was one of the ones that was like man he just looks exactly like a tv boss from the 50s like indistinguishable it's, it's almost like you expect when you you'd expect to look into his imdb and it would just be filled with 50s sitcoms or something <laughs> like oh he was on the dick van deck show and here he was on this or something and obviously he like that would be outside of his era as an actor but um it's just cool how they were able to do that 
Catherine Hahn is in the series as well. She plays Agnes. He's kind of the nosy neighbor that gets involved in their business. She's one of those actresses that just like, I think a lot of people like they don't necessarily know who they are, know who she is, but they've seen her in like a hundred things. She's one of those types. She was an anchor man. Uh, she was in, was it Suburgatory? No, I don't think it was Suburgatory. It was in, maybe it was Suburgatory with, uh, Jane Levy. I haven't seen that. She's, she's just been in a lot of stuff. She's probably somebody that you don't know, but you've seen and on right, things. Right. Instantly she's recognizable. Character. She's a character actor. Yeah. And, uh, one that's really notable is, uh, Dottie, the one that was like the neighborhood queen. She looked really familiar to me and I didn't place it until I put down the show notes, but that's Emma Caulfield who played Anya and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So if you remember that character, she was oh, like yeah, the demon. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. I recognized her immediately when that episode happened. Yeah. I didn't, I, I, I knew she looked familiar, but I didn't pick out who she was until that moment. You know, I was like, oh, okay, that's crazy. So yeah, those are the kind of the really notable ones I wanted to kind of point out. A lot of the other ones, you know, they're fine performances, but they're not kind of like actors that really stand out or anything right, right, from exactly. other things that we've seen, you know? But yeah, so anything else to say about WandaVision before we um, close the book for this week? No, I think we said everything that needs to be said. Yep. So uh, as we said, we're going to be covering this week to week. So next week we'll be talking about episode four of the series. And like we said, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to get a lot more MCUE <laughs> in the next episode. I think we're going to get a lot more outside material stuff going on. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for that. And uh, we'll be talking about that next week. Now, all we have left to do is talk about what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we're recording this on Monday, January 25th. Snowpiercer returned on TNT. Tomorrow, Tuesday, January 26th, Big Sky returns on ABC. Blackish and Mixedish both return on ABC. On Wednesday, January 27th, Resident Alien debuts on Sci-Fi. I'm kind of excited about that one. That one looks actually pretty interesting. And For Life comes to ABC. On Sunday, January 31st, The Long Song miniseries comes to PBS. On Monday, February 1st, The Investigation miniseries comes to HBO. On Wednesday, February 3rd, Firefly Lane comes to Netflix. No, this has nothing to do with the Fox series Firefly. <laughs> calm down. Calm down. <laughs> oh, man, I got excited there for a second. <laughs> on Thursday, February 4th, Impractical Jokers returns on True TV. This isn't normally like a scripted show. I just put that in the listings because I want to be reminded when it's coming up. It's like I got addicted to this show in the last like, couple of years. On Sunday, February 7th, The Equalizer returns on CBS. On Monday, February 8th, Black Lightning returns on the CW. Like, God, they're still doing the CW Arrowverse stuff. How long do you think that stuff's going to last? Because they're doing the MCU series now, the ones that tie directly in, and they basically just scrape, scrape the entire board of all the old Marvel shows. So the only non-MCU Marvel show we have coming left, I think, is like the MODOK like animated series. I have no idea. That's like it. And so in DC, they're starting to get like DC extended universe connected shows too because that, uh, God, who's the character that John Cena plays in the Suicide Squad movie that's coming out? Oh, Peacemaker. yeah, yeah, Peacemaker, yeah. Yeah, James no, Gunn doing... wrote, and they're they're currently filming, like a, a Peacemaker TV series for, for, for HBO, HBO Max. Max. Yeah, so apparently Warner wants to do something similar for their streaming service now. Yeah. And why not? Why not leverage that to get more eyes on your streaming service? It's smart. Yeah. But, but yeah, I don't, Arrowverse, I don't know how, how much gas is left in that tank. I mean, it's crazy because I, I people don't really talk about it anymore. It, it's not really in the cultural zeitgeist. It's starting to kind of fall away from like they, favor. They, I mean, I mean they they've already like canceled several shows now. Arrow is done. Uh, you know, Supergirl has been announced that that it's it's ending. Mm -hmm. They're rotating in new shows, but I I don't know. I I honestly don't know. I, I guess that's up to CW. Uh, you know how long the CW wants. Wants that to go on, I, I would suppose. It's interesting because I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna last in the face of these like high budget movie connected shows that are coming out now. Like I just don't think it can survive that, you know? But what well, makes well, it even more interesting, I think, is how deeply the CW like latched their horse to this wagon, you know? Right. Like it's pretty much the CW slate it's, now. It's is pretty it's, much it's half, it's half the lineup, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. So like if that, if that, although, drops, although 
Although there are, there are cracks now because because uh, the CW did announce that they are not moving forward with the Arrowverse show. You know, Black Canary. I think it was Black Canary and the Sirens. I think that's for the best. I don't think anybody was excited for that. No, nobody. Yeah, so they they announced they were not moving forward. I believe that's the first Arrowverse pilot in production that the CW actually turned down yeah. since, since the whole thing started. So yeah, so I, 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 I just I can't imagine there being much life left in in that that universe that franchise you know it's just i think it's gonna fade away i think as more of the marvel stuff ends up being inevitably successful on disney plus i think hbo max is gonna be doing because if you look at what hbo max is doing like i think just easier today or yesterday they announced that they're gonna be doing like a harry potter tv series so it's like they're they're looking at what Disney Plus is doing with like these really big budget like things that are connected to their huge universes that they manage with like Star Wars and Marvel. They're they're looking at that, you know, and they're they're adapting in that way. And it just doesn't seem like the Arrowverse is going to be convenient for them for much longer, you know? Like we saw how quickly the the Marvel shows fell off. There were yeah, so that, many Marvel shows on all that's these different a com- networks. That's a completely different situation. Situation that is that has to do with uh that that mostly that's mostly due to internal politics at Disney and Marvel Studios the whole split that happened with Marvel Studios between uh the power struggle between Kevin Feige and Ike Perlmutter Ike Perlmutter winning uh control of the television side and Kevin Feige winning control over the film side and then just recently Kevin Feige took over the television side as well took over the entire operation and that's why I have there's there's no such behind the scenes drama or power struggle at Warner Brothers or DC regarding the their properties there's not even remotely the same thing happening i don't think anybody at warner brothers cares particularly they they like the line they like to use is like oh the dc it's a multiverse so we can have five like movies about the flash running concurrently in fact they're planning to do two concurrent film series centered around batman yeah and a and a tv series too with that one as well tv yeah so i just i don't think they care i don't think they see something as like cw shows interfering with what they want to do with hbo max it's just not remotely the same thing i don't know man because the, they, for they the longest time they don't they just say multiverse it's all good but for the longest time look how protective they were over like batman which was they the were big ip they're no longer like that now that that ended that those those policies ended with yeah, the with the new man of. with the new management like hey man kind of but they've also been kind of nipping at marvel's heels and looking at what marvel's been doing and i just can't imagine even i i know that it comes from the internal politics with marvel and stuff but that fell off very quickly and kevin feige wasn't interested in tv at all at first no and he, he ended up taking over that part and and then as soon as he did that everything else fell away really quickly like it just didn't seem like reasonable to have anything else there you know i mean they had that hellstrom series that they just basically dropped marvel's name from entirely yeah and, and then that, now that's canceled yeah and that's gone and then all that's left i think is modok which is like an animated kind of comedy so it kind of like should be able to stand on its own because of that you know being such in such a different field but even that's not like it, it isn't getting kind of the promotion that was expected for it so even that's like looking like they're kind of stepping a little bit away but they already have it in the can so they're just going to put it out kind of thing right and we already saw that that DC did the thing where they, they tried to make a more serious DC universe using DC Universe, that streaming platform at first with like Swamp Thing and Titans and stuff. That wasn't really all that successful, but it was like higher budget, like bigger profile show kind of stuff. You know, like Doom Patrol was like much bigger budget. Oh, than yeah. The oh, Flash, yeah. You know? Yeah. That's not C- that's not Arrowverse. That was those were developed as their own separate thing mm-hmm. for the DC to sell the DC universe universe streaming service yeah and and then that stuff now dc universe is gone and and some of that stuff has transitioned over to hbo max but and then a bunch of that stuff's gotten canceled as well and now but but i just think like they have that peacemaker series coming that was written and directed by james gunn that's starring john cena they have that the batman series one that's that's uh it's not following 
Robert Pattinson's Batman, but it's going to like, it takes place in the same universe and it's the, the director is involved and everything like, and there's supposed to be like some cameos by Robert. All I, all I, all I could say is, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what their intentions are at Warner brothers. We will see. I just can't, I, 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 I can't imagine it having more than more than like three years left in its tank. We, we will see. Time will tell. Yeah. We'll see if that is. It's interesting though. It's something to keep an eye on, you know, if you start seeing like more and more cancellations coming there, you kind of can see the writing on the wall if that's the case. But yeah, that's what's coming up in the week ahead. We went off on a little tangent there, but it's interesting. It's an interesting topic. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can follow Will. He is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, as well as our site, thetotalscreen.com. You can subscribe to this podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or Pocket Cast. And the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to reach out to us and make a comment, send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to The Total Screen for the very best in genre.